Paolo Veronese, a man who painted the way he saw the world. From the ceilings of basilicas to just plain old canvases, he is one of the most renowned Venetian painters of the Italian Renaissance. But what is this man's backstory? Well, for that, we're going to need to take it all the way back to 1528. But first, we must address a problem. His name wasn't Paolo Veronese. It was Paolo Cagliari, and the Cagliaris were a bunch of stonecutters in Verona. Now, where did he get this name, Veronese? Well, it comes from his hometown of Verona. Now, that's also the setting of A Tale of Two Lovers by Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, which was very famous by him. But it's irrelevant to the story. In his younger years, in Verona, he went to go apprentice with a man named Antonio Badil, who taught him everything he needed to know about painting in the Mannerist style and with fresco paintings. So he made plenty of altarpieces and gifts for the church. But Mannerism and fresco painting, what does all that mean? Some famous paintings in this style include The School of Athens by Raphael and The Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo. Antonio Badil played a huge role in Veronese's life, even becoming his father-in-law. But at around 18, he no longer needed him. His skills were already surpassing Badil's. After showing up Badil, he was commissioned to paint more altarpieces for families and churches in his area. In this period, he painted the family of Darius before Alexander, which depicts Alexander the Great after defeating the Persians in war. And this is a very rare piece, because it's a secular piece, and it survived the Inquisition. But we'll talk about them later. He first gained minor popularity with his contributions to the Church of San Sebastian, with works like the History of Esther and San Mark that still stand there today. Andrea Palladio is one of the most influential architects in history, and he was about to team up with Paolo Veronese to create some of the most amazing biblical works during his time period. The duo would go on to team up for many, many more commissions for the church, including one of Veronese's most famous paintings, The Wedding at Cana, which depicts Jesus as a child turning water into wine. This painting is now at the Louvre. However, their partnership would not last forever. But, as a tribute to him, Veronese would adopt his style in many of the backgrounds of his paintings. As his life winded down, Veronese had one more smash hit as a painter. That was The Last Supper, or The Feast of the House of Levi. The painting was for the Basilica di Santi Giovanni, to basically replace a Titian painting that had been lost in a fire. There was only one problem, the Inquisition. The Inquisition was a group of government institutions for the Catholic Church that judged and combated public heresy during this time. The Inquisition overall found no heresy in the painting, but there was a catch. Paolo had to change the name of the painting to the Feast at the House at Levi. He eventually settled down in Venice and married Elena Badil. Yes, that's Antonio's daughter. They had four sons and one daughter, and he opened his own workshop to train others until his death in 1588.